How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now usually we're talking about producing energy, right? How to get solar panels on our home, maybe ground mounted or a DIY setup to produce energy to help us offset bills or power an off-grid setup. But today, just as importantly, let's talk about the actual consumption of energy and understanding that and how do we measure energy consumption of our appliances. Now we're gonna use a simple setup here. We'll actually measure it on this coffee maker and show you by understanding a little bit about energy consumption, you can make much smarter decisions in the future and help to design an overall system that's gonna meet your needs, but not consume a bunch of energy that you don't need to be consuming. And then I used to just use a clamp meter to measure the amperage and then that's how I would get my overall energy consumption, knowing that this would be on a 120 volt circuit. But for as little as $15, they're actually are energy monitors. I'll show you one of those, but it's a much better solution for appliances like coffee makers, but more specifically for appliances that are an inconsistent load over time. You can measure those for multiple days and then really get an understanding on overall energy consumption. So let's jump into it. So like I had mentioned in the past, I'd actually use a splitter here. This splits out the hot and neutral side. So you, pl you would plug your appliance into the splitter and then you were able to use a standard current clamp. Now this splitter specifically actually multiplies your current by 10. So you would go up to the 200 to 400 amp setting. You would clamp that around the hot side. Then I would measure the amperage while running the appliance. But here we're not accumulating anything. I would have to monitor the fluctuations myself and kind of make an estimate. So that is definitely not the best option, especially if you need to do a multi-hour or multi-day test. So the much better option are these inexpensive energy watt meters you can get off Amazon. Now these are only about 12 to $15 and you'll see a link in the description of this video for this exact one that I'm using. And all you have to do is plug it in and then plug your appliance in the front side. So let's run a quick test, but first I am going to reset this meter. So we go ahead and reset our time. Now this meter can also give you costs, but all you have to do is hold the cost for three seconds. Then you'll hit your function key. That will go through the decimal places and then you can adjust. So for me, I pay 12 cents per kilowatt hour. So I'm just gonna set that to 12 press cost again, and now we're locked in. So if we were doing a multi-hour or multi-day test, having that cost in there does help out because then it'll give you the overall cost of the energy consumed during that test. So we've reset our clock. We have it on wattage, but you can change your function. So now we're just gonna do a simple test. I'll use my handy dandy everyday home repairs mug. I'm gonna set it to single cup. We're just doing a single cup. And then we'll show you a whole pot after this and the dramatic difference between brewing a single cut and a whole pot, which is good information to know. So I'll go ahead and start to brew. And now as the brewing cycle starts, you can see we have 928, so almost a kilowatt of power coming through. And that is the power at the second. Now you have many different screens, so you can adjust to get kilowatt hours. So during this cycle, during this 31 second cycle, how many kilowatt hours have I used? So that is the energy consumption. That's really what we're going after here. But you also look at voltage, what hertz it is, how many amps are we pulling? What is the low wattage? What is the high wattage of this test? What is that cost that we set it to, which is 12 cents per kilowatt hour, and then we're back to wattage. So I like to set this to kilowatt hours. That is really what I'm looking at here, is how much are we consuming in terms of energy. So I'll go ahead and speed through this and we'll see how much energy do we consume while brewing the single cup of coffee. All right, so that test is easy enough to run. We have our nice cup of coffee here. Now I'll go ahead and unplug this guy. And you probably saw at the end of that cycle, 0 0.028, so almost 0 0.03 kilowatt hours is what we actually consumed in terms of energy to do one cup of coffee. So if you're doing some type of setup a tailgating setup, you're trying to power with solar, maybe it's a tool trailer and you want a coffee maker in there. This way you can say, okay, energy consumption 0.03, let's say kilowatt hours, 
per cup. How many cups am I gonna do over duration of time? And then that's what you would use from the coffee maker energy consumption and then add that to all your other appliances or all your other energy needs within that setup. But I'm gonna run a much longer cycle. I'm actually going to brew a whole pot of coffee and let it go through a normal cycle. A normal cycle at my house, we leave it on, it keeps it warm, and you actually do that for an hour or more. So I'll go ahead and run that complete cycle and show you the dramatic difference in terms of energy consumption if you only want one cup of coffee, this is gonna make you reconsider how you approach that in the future. Are you making a whole pot of coffee or are you just doing a single cup? So I just finished the test and this is where the energy watt meter really shines because it overall took two hours. Why did it take two hours? Because your coffee machine goes through the initial cycle to warm up the water, it sends the water through your actual grounds and then it makes your coffee, right? But then, down at the bottom, you have a hot plate and you'll hear a relay clicking on and off about every two minutes. And that's to keep your coffee warm. And that lasts for about two hours. So if we now look at our energy watt meter, the total energy consumption was 0.273. Now remember before when we did a single cup or mug of coffee, it was 0.03. So now we're about nine times that we made five times as much coffee, but the energy consumption because of the hot plate was nine times that. So with a simple, very inexpensive energy meter, you can start to better understand your appliances and make smart decisions when you're designing your whole solar power system. Specifically for coffee, now you know a single cup because it does not have a hot plate. It's not gonna to continue to warm that is a more efficient way. But don't forget also there are some coffee makers like this that you can get a whole carafe, but it's actually a thermal carafe. So it's gonna hold that heat and it's not gonna to have to continually warm it with a hot plate. So that is also a little bit more efficient option for you. So now you can kind of go over your different appliances. You can do this to your refrigerator, pretty much any 120 volt appliance that you have access to the cord, you can go through and have a better understanding of the actual energy consumption of that appliance. Now, if you wanna go a step further, I'm gonna be installing the Emporia 16 circuits so I can actually track 16 individual circuits at my electrical panel. I'll be installing this at my house and if you want to see how that installation goes and how you can monitor on a continual basis all those different circuits, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the full installation. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.